So uh, when I turned 45, a new little golden pill came into my life. Um, you know, when you hit sort of middle-ish age, these things start to happen. Your brain moves slower and your heart beats faster, and I was feeling the things in my joints, and I really didn't want to be old. And so I started going onto the internet in the middle of the night, which we know we should never do, but we always do, and I, and I started looking around for homeopathic ways to kind of beat middle age. And every single time I Googled something, this came up. The omega-3 fish oil supplement came up again and again and again. And I thought, maybe I should take it. So then I thought, well, what else can the omega-3 do? So I put into Google, omega-3s may, or omega-3s might. And I hit the strangest responses. Omega-3s may make your brain bigger, may make muscles bigger in older adults. And then my favorite one, omega-3s may, make your, um, may improve sperm competitiveness. Um, I'm not exactly sure why you would want your sperm to be more competitive, but absolutely, I wanted my sperm to be the most competitive. But anyway, I write about fish. Um, the ocean is in my world. So of course, the omega-3 has always been sort of floating around out there. And after I started to kind of think about all the things the omega-3 may or may not do, I realized I had to find out. I had to find out what was this omega-3, where did it come from, and what did it do? So to begin with, um, the omega-3 is, long word, polyunsaturated fatty acid. And the reason it's called the omega-3 is that three carbons in from the omega end is this double bond between two carbon molecules. So you could say... Um, it's kind of a good pickup line. You're at a bar. You could say, Scusi, did you know that the omega-3 is called the omega-3 because it's three carbons in from the omega end of the molecule? And then whoever you're talking to will walk away. But anyway, um, so generally we tend to think that the omega-3 is coming to us from fish, which it does, but that's not who makes the omega-3. Turns out the omega-3 is invented and was made in the first place hundreds of millions of years ago by phytoplankton. And the reason they invented it in the first place was an adaptation to climate change. Once upon a time, hundreds of millions of years ago, when all of these microorganisms started to suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, it started getting cooler and cooler. And if you didn't have an adaptation to colder environments, you couldn't survive. And so what these plankton did is they incorporated, they invented the omega-3 fatty acid. That double carbon bond makes their membranes much, much more dynamic. And so they were able to invade the poles, invade colder spaces, and in fact, it allowed life to spread around the world. Now, evolution's weird. Um, it's hard to say what evolution is going to do with one tool that some other creature did with it another time. And humans, when they stumbled upon the omega-3 fatty acid, actually used it in all sorts of very interesting ways. Uh, in your heart and your circulatory system, omega-3s seem to regulate inflammation and cause resolution, the op opposite of inflammation. They're also an integral part of the brain. Something like 10% of the human brain is actually omega-3 fatty acids. They act as almost like traffic lights in the cell signaling of your brain. So very, very important, very, very interesting. And some people even say that possibly... Um, 50, 60,000 years ago, when humans first kind of overate all the land food that was out there and all they had left was seafood, that's when we started to really grow our brains. That's when we really incorporated omega-3s into our diet. And surprise, that's when we started to advance further than any animal had ever gone. So the omega-3 pops up in all these interesting ways. Um, just up the road in Pompeii, if you go through all of the uh, relics that you'll find there, one of the most common things you'll find is a vessel for garum. Garum was a fish sauce that the Romans made from distilled fish guts. And it was so intrinsic to Roman society that you could go all the way up to the Roman roads in Vinlandia in, in Great Britain and find little bottles of fish sauce still there on the road. So, so important was it to them that they brought it all the way to the north. And in later years, recent years, when scientists have reconstructed what garum would have contained, guess what? 
very high in omega-3 fatty acids. And, and this is something that's still harvested today. This is right near here in the village of Chitara, where I went fishing overnight with some of these fishermen. And what do they make from all these anchovies? They catch colatura, the, the modern incarnation of Roman garum. So other things have been kind of circling around this fish oil thing. Um, those of you who are older than 50 years old might remember given, being given a horrible spoonful of cod liver oil, right? And this horrible thing that we all were taught was good for us. Well, it actually was good for us. Um, in the 19th century, when children started to develop rickets, it turns out that cod liver oil, which is very high in vitamin D, causes us to overcome rickets, and it was actually a cure for rickets way back then. So already there was this very positive feeling around the omega-3 supplement. Then, going on to the modern days, we started to link omega-3 supplementation with the resolution of cardiovascular disease. And there were these amazing studies done of Inuit Eskimos in um, Greenland and other northern places where they found that very, very high consumption of omega-3 fatty acids um, led to very low incidences of cardiovascular disease. However, in the last few years, we've started to do some really intensive studies looking at um, omega-3 supplementation. And in the last few years, study after study has been coming out with these very, very unimpressive results that omega-3 supplementation was not associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality, cardiac death, sudden death, myocardial infarction or stroke. So what's going on here? Does the omega-3 work or doesn't it work? Well, to find that answer, I really had to look at what was driving the omega-3 supplement industry. It's a $15 billion industry, omega-3 supplements and omega-3 supplemented uh, products. So what's driving it is this other thing called the reduction industry. The reduction industry um, boils down something like 25 million metric tons of fish every single year into fish meal and fish oil. Some of it goes into supplements, but a lot of it goes into feeding uh, animals. At first, it fed chickens and then pigs. Um, we used it for fertilizer, for corn and soy. And interestingly enough, if you look at all of these products, all of these products that we were putting omega-3s into, they actually... Um, represent another omega, which is the omega-6. I bet you never heard of the omega-6 before. But the omega-6 turns out to be very closely linked with inflammation and with a lot of other diseases out there. there the omega-6s are essential fatty acids, just like omega-3s, but the ratio in modern humans is all out of whack. Probably Paleolithic humans had a ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s of one-to-one but now it's something like 15 or even 30 to 1, omega-6s to omega-3s. So you basically have this situation where omega-6s and omega-3s are competing in the human body for the same space and the same enzymes, um, and it's come down to a real competition between land food and seafood in our bodies. But it's also a competition of land food versus seafood in the natural environment. So one of the things I said that little fish have been used over the years to do is to fertilize things like corn. Well, the other thing that we've been doing to grow corn is to dam up rivers all up and down our coasts. So this is my home state of Connecticut. There are over 3,000 dams in the state of Connecticut. And what were they built for? They were built to grind corn. In other words, killing omega-3 fish to grow omega-6 crops. And just to give you an idea of how many dams, this is this, the province of Campania here, that's about as many dams as we shoved into the state of Connecticut. But not just in America, there are over a million dams, fish-blocking dams, throughout Europe. And there's other ways that um, land food is destroying seafood. Huge amounts of fertilizer that are washing into our river systems are causing dead zones all over the world, something like 400 dead zones where there's too little oxygen for seafood to exist. And then the last reason, the last way that land food is destroying seafood is through carbon and through fossil fuels. Because after energy production, the production of land food meat is the highest contributor of, of, of carbon into the atmosphere. And with all that carbon going into the environment, what we're seeing is gradually as the ocean gets more acidic, as the ocean gets more stratified, um, as more and more pressure goes on marine life, that if we continue down this route, we're going to go from an interdependent system of complex life to what's called a microbial loop, where just bacteria is born, plankton is born, bacteria eats the plankton, the elements go down, 
get reformed into bacteria and more plankton, a simple, boring, unnutritious life. So can we eat our way out of all this? Well, I think we could try, and I think we should. First of all, what we could do is look at all of these things that I consider omega-6 foods and shrink them down. And we should try to maybe equal them with our seafood. Now, this is not to say we should have tons of fish or, you know, equal the amount of uh, meat we have with the amount of fish we'll start eating. No. And in fact, as you all know, the Mediterranean diet, which is probably one of the healthiest patterns of eating that was really discovered right here in Campania, really says to us, animal protein, maybe just a couple of times a week. And what I'm saying here is that let's make that little amount of protein sustainably raised seafood. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now, when we look at seafood, we're focusing on these large, big predators that are, again, very intensive in carbon to grow, very, very um, uh, limited in the amount that they have, that they exist in the ocean. But what if we tried to supplement our seafood with all these other kinds of ways of eating from the sea that are, at one time, both high in omega-3s, but also very good for the environment? We could eat things like anchovies. Something like 99% of the anchovies caught in the world get ground down into fish meal and to fish oil and, and dietary supplements. But if we ate them directly, they're extremely carbon efficient, and they're also quite high in omega-3 fatty acids. We could also turn to things that are actually ecologically benef beneficial for the ocean to grow. Things like mussels and clams, things like kelp, very high in omega-3 fatty acids and very, very low in carbon. If you look at something like a mussel, it's 30 times more carbon efficient than growing a cow. All of these creatures also filter and process all those nitrates that are pouring into our oceans from fertilizers, from sewage plants. These creatures can actually neutralize them and actually do away with those dead zones that are killing our oceans. And lastly, we could figure out how to grow fish much more efficiently and in a way that is actually improving the ocean and improving our planet. Right now, we have the ability to take food waste, and keep in mind, For every forkful of food that we Westerners eat, we throw a forkful into the garbage. Think about it. But we now have a way to take that food waste to feed an amazing organism I discovered called the black soldier fly larvae. That then can be ground down into, into fish meal and fed to fish. We can get rid of a lot of food waste, get rid of the methane it produces, and we can have healthy, delicious fish that's good for us. So in short, if we were to look at making not an omega-6 world, but an omega-3 world. If we were to have an omega-3 world consisting of these highly beneficial, balancing organisms, we could end up in a situation where we have balanced bodies and balanced Earth. Thank you very much. Thank you.